Well, when I speak about uh, stories and science communication, uh, I'm doing so mainly from an analytical point of view rather than from a practical training point of view. I'm, I'm, I'm well aware that there is a very strong trend now in training to focus on storytelling, uh, constructing narratives as a way of engaging various publics. Uh, and I do that also, uh, but I make a distinction between that and applying a story concept to the an analysis of how science has been and is being communicated in public arenas. Uh, so the second is my major interest in this, uh, but I would also, as a starting point, say that all science communication has as its heart a story or stories, whether it's done by video like we're doing now, or it's done by audio, or it's done by image, uh, or it's done by writing newspaper articles. At the core, there is a story. So what kind of story? Uh, and that's what I've been interested to look at over the last few years. The default story is the story of discovery. So scientists in the University of Trento have discovered something and published a, an article or a paper in journal somewhere. Uh, and that's a common form for many decades and remarkably unchanged. Considering that you know, we're here in a context talking about the communication of science and innovation. Actually, the innovation in the communication of science is rather limited when you think that the major kind of communication to general publics through media, but not only through media, through museums, through documentaries and so on, through books, uh, it takes the form of the the story of discovery, which is largely unchanged over a very long time. But then what other stories are possible? Well, there are stories of hope, uh, which relate closely to those of discovery. There are stories of celebration, uh, you know, big prizes, big findings, big results, uh, and so on. There are stories then uh, of caution. So scientists warning about something there are stories of uh, interrogation where the perspective that's taken on science is that it is something to be examined critically. The way that we do with politics, the way that we do with arts, theatre, literature, the way that we do with sport. Curiously, we do not so much to science. You know, so the stories of interrogation are very, very uh, uh, much in the minority. Although, again, here's the paradox, although the idea of science is an idea of interrogation, of interrogating nature, uh, of interrogating materials or life forms or indeed social forms, uh, yet the interrogation of science uh, is very limited. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about stories in science communication. What's the repertoire? What's the menu? And which are the... the, the uh, you know, what, what's the menu du jour? What's, what's, what's currently being done and what might be done in other ways? I have a very short one uh, and then many longer ones. So my very short one is that science communication is society talking about science. And of course, within society, scientists are included. So another way of maybe expressing that is science communication is the social conversation about science. Um, what I mean by using that kind of definition is to say everything is included, not only how institutions communicate with their publics or how media, uh, traditional media communicate with their publics or how uh, social media activists and protagonists communicate with their publics and so on. But actually all the conversations that take place, whether they take place informally in a cafe or a bar, in a science cafe, for example, or formally through lectures, talks, exhibitions, displays, uh, uh, demonstrations, etc. So that's why I use a rather short and very inclusive definition. 
if I had to make a longer, more complicated definition, I would focus on science communication as relationships uh, rather than the transmission of information. Uh, so it's the interactions and relationships between various social actors around science. Uh, and that could take many different forms, uh, not just storytelling, but also political participation, uh, uh, accountability mechanisms, etc., etc. So uh, that would be a, a longer one, and the and, and the more words you try to add, the the, the more ambiguous it becomes, mm -hmm. uh, paradoxically, rather than you know. So the short definition is deliberately inclusive. The longer definition is more problematic. Because by putting in more definition, you actually start excluding things. Uh, but uh, I, I consider science communication, uh, I think, usefully to be seen as just everything that is included in talking about science in uh, broad social contexts. Uh, and I would not make a hard distinction between scientists talking about science among each other and scientists talking about science in public arenas because so much science is crosses disciplinary boundaries. And for scientists to cross disciplinary boundaries in talking about their own science, they have to popularize it to make it accessible to colleagues who come from a different background. So for that reason, I don't make a very hard distinction between what used to be sometimes called in English and can't be done in Italian, unfortunately. Uh, well, it can be, but it's a bit different. Uh, scientific communication as distinct from science communication but I think you have to do it in Italian as communicazione scientifica, scientifica and communicazione della scienza or maybe even better della scienza because there are sciences very much at play uh, currently in between natural sciences and social sciences material sciences and space sciences and so on Uh, I think a continuing challenge is staying relevant. Um, uh, if we think of science communication uh, as a community or a set of communities, uh, some of which are professional, uh, so people here in Trento are being educated to potentially be professional science communicators or science communication managers or program makers or whatever. Uh, if we think of, of that as one of the key communities in science communication, the challenge for those who are working in the area professionally will be to stay relevant. And that means being adaptable uh, to changes in technology, media technologies, and changes in social relationships between uh, institutions. So if you'd asked me the same question, e even when I started in this uh, arena 25 years ago, uh, the focus would have been on journalism and science journalism as the main mediation between the scientific institutions and the social world uh, or the broader public world, public arena. Uh, and that's no longer the, the principal channel. And, and that channel, if you like, which had considered itself indispensable and primary, is threatened with extinction uh, because there are so many people of different kinds who are not professional journalists, who are producing stories about science, and so many institutions that are communicating directly with their publics and their target audiences in the policy arena or in the educational arena, uh, directly by means of social media, web uh, stories, and, uh, and so on. Even these kinds of media we're now using, yeah? Uh, so the challenge is to remain relevant and to remain adaptable uh, for those who are working in the arena professionally. Uh, and for science communication more broadly, uh, as, as I've just defined it as the social conversation about science, uh, it's hard to say this is the challenge because it isn't a coherent, homogenous entity. But nonetheless, uh, I think the uh, challenge for all of those who have an interest in this area, be it volunteers or professionals, uh, uh, the challenge is to make uh, science as a way of knowing the world accessible to the world at large in the everyday. 
uh, and th for that reason and with that in mind, uh, I, I'm particularly focused and interested uh, in uh, media or um, formats like science cafes that situate themselves in the everyday where you can almost by chance uh, meet a conversation that's been somewhat organised in an informal space, in a public space. Uh, uh, no scripts, no screens, no uh, uh, artefacts, just talking. Uh, and the ability to talk, for scientists to talk and for citizens to question scientists to talk in those kinds of arenas, uh, making that available, making that possible, uh, seems to me to be one key way to situate science in the everyday, which if I had to uh, state the purpose of science communication, which I don't like doing, but if I had to state the purpose of science communication, it is to situate science in the everyday, in the public culture of the everyday.